Erev Pesach, everyone. We welcome everyone to the Passover service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us and for those who will listen in later on the archives as well. We pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Before we get started, I'm going to open with our opening prayer and invite the Holy Spirit in to lead us and guide us. Avina Mokino, our Father, our King, we thank you. We thank you for bringing us to, to this occasion of Passover. And it is not only a historic, historical holiday for us, as we know that you led our people out of Egypt, out of bondage, but it is also so very important to every single believer, born again believer, future born again believer in Yeshua, because it also signifies the release of bondage from sin and the freedom to come to him and have eternal life. And that this is a gift that you have given to us. This is also something that you have ordained for us to celebrate generation to generation. And this is for all of the family of God. We thank you, Father God, for this. And this is an appointed Moedim. And we're here to honor you. And all we can do is honor you because you are an amazing, amazing Father, Creator, God. You are everything to us. And we thank you, Yeshua, for everything that you've done for us to set us free, free, for, free once and for all. We ask the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, direct us in this entire service. Open the eyes of our heart, open the ears of our heart. And for those that might not have understood the meaning of Passover, that they can grasp it and, and grasp it enough to honor this year, yearly, as we are to do. We know Yeshua that you kept the feast as well. And you are our role model, our example. We thank you. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you are doing, and all that you will be doing. We give you all of our praises and honor and glory because it belongs to you. We lift your name high. We praise your holy name. We thank you. And we pray this prayer in the mighty name, the name above all names. The name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, our King, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Well, there's a lot of ground to cover, and I apologize. I am nasally congested right now, so um, I may have to pause the recording at times. Um, there's a lot of wind going on here, so my allergies have kicked up today. Also, I am pre-recording this and I'm probably going to upload it and post it a little bit earlier because there's been requests of, of wanting um, Passover Seder services at people's fingertips that they can they can actually tune in and, and uh, participate in, in a Passover Seder. Um, so I wanted to make that available. Also, I want to mention um, this year um, the, the 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 feast is going to be a little bit different because of where Passover is falling in the middle of the week. So there are various other services through through the week of Passover that you'll be seeing posted with with music. Um, actually, tomorrow is a high sab. Well, it is a high Sabbath. So what we're gonna what we're gonna do is also do a a service for a high Sabbath, um, and also um, also um, the feast of unleavened bread. Uh, there'll be a recording on that as well, and then Saturday, of course, is is Shabbat, and Sunday is the we're gonna keep it in line with the Christian Resurrection Sunday. So. Um, the Feast of First Fruits will be right the next day. So there's back to back services. And then the middle of the week will also be a high Sabbath. 
what we're also going to have our live in real time uh, meeting on Tuesday evening, as well as the Bible study. So all of these things are going to go on. So you'll have a lot of opportunity to partake in what's going on with our ministry in particular. So to focus on what's going to happen this evening, we're going to talk about um, the Passover. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, give you a little bit of a, uh, a background on the Passover, how it relates now. And also, there are scripture readings, which we will do along with the Hallel. Depending on the time, um, I want to, uh, on this part, because this is going to this is gonna be on two parts, um, I may end with an, the altar call and then the closing of part one. And part two, maybe begin with that altar call if, if there's not enough time. I'm limited to the amount of time I can put uh, for upload loading purposes. Um, but if the altar call ends in part one, um, then we will begin with the actual Passover Seder. Um, and also we're going to continue and also do Holy Communion for those that, that prefer to also uh, partake of Holy Communion. And then um, the closure of service for this evening. So there is a lot of ground to cover. So I just wanted to let you know ahead of time where we're going with, with the service today. I'm going to start with a little introduction, and I'm going to read from my self-published book, The Truth is in the Word, um, from chapter 7, The Commanded Feast of God. In Leviticus chapter 23, our Father commanded annual feasts of the Lord, and these were part of God's eternal, eternal plan for all generations, and they were meant to, meant to be kept for all times forever. Our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, kept every one of these commanded feasts without fail when he was on earth. He even celebrated Pesach, which in English is Passover, on his last earthly night, added the new covenant of communion of the body and blood for atonement of sins, as he was to be the sacrificial lamb of God to take away the sins of the world on that particular Passover feast. So to highlight the feast, I'm going to just briefly mention um, these feasts because as we go through them, we're going to have individual recordings on them. Um, the first three feasts of the seven were actually fulfilled by Yeshua, by Jesus. Um, the last three have not been fulfilled yet. So um, it was on Mount Sinai that, that Adonai gave Moses the dates and observances of the seven commanded feasts and their names, and they are as follows. Pesach, Passover, on Nisan 14 of the Hebrew calendar. Chag Hamatzah, Hamatzah, which is unleavened bread, and that goes from Nisan 15 to 22 of the Hebrew calendar. First fruits, Yom Habakurim, is Nisan 16 of the Hebrew calendar. And then we have Passover, uh, I'm sorry, Pentecost, which we call Shavuot. It also is referred to as the Feast of Weeks. Um, and that is on Sivan 6. There's something that happens in between um, Yom Habakurim and Shavuot is, is what is known as the counting of the Omer, which is... Um, the counting of the days to Shavuot. Um, the Feast of Trumpets, or Yom Teruah, also known as Rosh Hashanah, is on Tishri 1. This, this is one of the first of the fall feasts. This is also um, the, the Jewish civil new year. Yom Kippur, the, the, the Feast of Atonement, is Tishri 10 on the Hebrew calendar. And Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles, or Booths, um, on Tishri 15. And that's also an eight-day um, eight feast, just as um, we're talking about uh, Passover in the spring. Adonai's calendar is not the same calendar that we are following. The Hebrew calendar and the Gregorian calendar are not the same, as we know. Uh, the Hebrew calendar is based on the phases of the of the moon, 
and each month is a lunar calendar begins with a new moon and 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 we do rosh kodesh services um, that is that is an appointed time as well so we know that's a new moon plus we're bringing in a new calendar month for the hebrew calendar the sock passover occurs on the first full moon of spring and the first three feasts fall in march and april and the fourth one occurs in late may or early june the last three feasts occur in September and October, generally. Father God commanded believers to keep and celebrate these seven feasts at his appointed times. And we know Yeshua is the word of God that became flesh. So absolutely, Yeshua would not go against himself, the word. Um, and the word is to keep these feasts. Now, we, we celebrated Purim, and we also celebrate Hanukkah. The Purim comm commemorates the saving of the Jewish people from Haman, who is planning to kill them all in, in that day. This true story can be found in the book of Esther, who was instrumental in saving her people. This is not an appointed time of God, but it's, it, it's certainly very, very important um, to celebrate that and, and, to, and to understand what it signifies. Hanukkah also is very important. And Yeshua, Yeshua kept Hanukkah. Um, and that is the Festival of Lights. It is a lesser festival. It, it occurs in December, the month of Kislev. Um, Kislev 25 on the Hebrew calendar to be exact. And this also lasts for eight days. It commemorates the rededication of the temple in 165 BC by the Maccabees after it had been destroyed by the Syrians. It also ce celebrates the triumph of lightness over darkness, spiritualism over materialism, and purity over adultery. It's also known as the Feast of Dedication. So um, as believers, I'm going to skip along here. As believers, it was commanded that everyone observe the seven commanded feasts of the Lord. Contrary to popular belief, they were not just meant for the Jewish people. And the New Testament did not cancel them out as Yeshua, Jesus, did not abolish the law, but he came to fulfill it. And he himself observed all the feasts. When it is an ongoing, it is, it is, it is stated that this is to be observed forever. <laughs> it, that means forever. It, it, there's, there's no two ways about it. Now also, um, to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy and the Sabbath day, of course, we know is on Saturday. It is the seventh day of the week. Sunday is actually the first day of the week. The Sabbath day that, that Adonai hallowed begins sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. This is the true seventh day. The seven feasts and two lesser feasts begin also at sundown and complete darkness. The first day of all of our holidays begin at sundown of the eve of that holiday and end at sundown on the day of that holiday. If you think about creation, we didn't go from light to darkness. We went from darkness to light. So that, that makes sense how a day is um, thought of. With regards to the seven commandment feasts, these days may be found at varying times on the Gregorian calendar because man's timetable is different from God's. And the Hebrew calendar, the, the amount of days differs from the Gregorian calendar as well. Father God set specific and fixed days for these feasts. So when we talk about Passover, we're just going to talk about Passover right now um, because that's what we're moving into here. Um, Passover, the Hebrew name is Pesach. It occurs in March or April on Nisan 14 in the Hebrew calendar. It is found in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 5, in the 14th day, the first month, that even is the Lord's Passover. This begins in the evening on Nisan 14, and some of the words associated with Passover are redemption, and Nisan is the month of redemption sacrifice, death of the Messiah, this feast was fulfilled, and it was fulfilled by Yeshua, 
Jesus himself. Passover is the feast of salvation in both the, the Old and New Testament. The blood of the Lamb delivers from slavery. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew nation was delivered out of bondage from Egypt, and this was precipitated by the tenth and final plague put upon Egypt. The blood of the sacrificed unblemished lambs on the doors of, of the Jewish people spared them from the angel of death when they were passed, passed over, and death of all the firstborn struck Egypt. After that event, Pharaoh allowed the Hebrew nation to leave Egypt and be free from bondage. In the New Testament, in what we call what the New Covenant or the Brit Kadashah, all of humanity, past, present, and future, were delivered from the bondage of sin through the blood of the sacrificial Lamb of God, our Messiah Yeshua, Jesus. And salvation is offered to those who believe and accept Yeshua's gift and sacrifice for all humanity. Yeshua was crucified on Passover. He was the sacrificial lamb and was the ultimate sacrifice, and none was needed was needed after his sacrifice. It is said that all the other Passovers prior to the Passover, when Yeshua died, were all dress rehearsals for that particular Passover when this feast was fulfilled by our Messiah, by Yeshua Jesus. Now, just to, to note, our Lord and Savior, our King of Kings, he has two natures. And we we saw we, we see that he has been here the first time in the first nature, the suffering servant. Um actually Messiah Ben Yosef is what he's also referred to. He is not coming back, he's not being born as an infant to 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 live to be thirty-three years old and suffer horribly uh and and die for everyone he's not he's already done that when he is when he comes again he is coming as our king to rule and reign as as the lion of the tribe of judah i also want to mention that um yeshua is is his hebrew name and it does mean salvation in addition, on the eve of Passover was the Last Supper, and when the New Covenant was given to the disciples to include what we call Holy Communion, taking the elements of bread to symbolize to symbolize in remembrance the body of, of Yeshua that was broken for all of us, and wine or grape juice or to symbolize the blood of Yeshua that was shed for the remission of sins. Passover is also a set feast for pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Now, as I said, I'm going to get into um, the other feasts as we go. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to read from this book, the other, the other two feasts that we're going to be engaging in, in the, in the, in the next week. Um, the first three feasts, again, were fulfilled through Yeshua through the crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. And then um, we will later talk about Pentecost, Shavuot. So, um, and I mentioned there are, that uh, Passover is a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Three feasts are, are set. It is Passover. And some will actually refer to the week of Passover um, the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread or, or Matzah, because the day after Passover is when no no uh, leaven is to be eaten. Actually, we're not really eating it on on Passover either. So, and that's through the course of a, a of a week. Actually, Pentecost and Sukkot are the other two pilgrimages feasts that that require pilgrimages to Jerusalem. And I just want to mention Christianity's Jewish roots involving the seven commanded feasts of the Lord help us to see what was fulfilled, how it was fulfilled in the past, and it also reveals what is yet to come. It also helps us to see more clearly just where we are on God's prophetic time clock.
There are many who may say this was Old Testament and it doesn't refer to Christians. Yeshua changed all that. This is not true, as I mentioned. Actually, these feasts were commanded by God for all times and generations. Yeshua did not come to change the law, but to fulfill it. And indeed, the first four feasts have already been fulfilled by him. Well, by the whole, well, the, the, the Feast of Pentecost, by the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, which he promised to, to, uh, to us when he had to leave. It is relevant to today as the last three feasts are yet to be fulfilled. So if you throw that all out, you have no idea where we are on God's prophetic time clock. This is why many people are do not know. The last feast will be fulfilled in the future by Yeshua, by Jesus himself. So, um, unfortunately, what happened, again, by the time of the Council of Nicaea in the 4th century, 325 AD, Constantine, who did not have an epiphany, he still was practicing pagan things, everything that's up on his arch, is pagan. There's no Christian symbol symbolization. There's no cross up there. Um, this was a way to get those that were following Jesus to also incorporate pagan practices, which happened, you know, through the course. If you read the Bible, that happened over and over and over and over again. So be careful um, because some, some of what is being practiced is pagan um, and we should not be participating in that. God does not want that so you need to really be discerning what you involve yourself in because it could be a worldly things. It could be pagan things. And no, um, Jesus did not teach paganism. Jesus did not teach you to incorporate other religions and, and things from the world. No. Um, unfortunately, um, Constantine was also forcing um, Jewish practices to cease and forbade them. Uh, including the commanded feasts of God, including the real Sabbath day. He even forbid, as I mentioned, he even forbade Sabbath as Saturday. Unfortunately, as Christianity evolved through the control first of Rome, those feasts were also taken out of practice and the Jews and Christians became more separated, even though the Christian faith is based on, on, on the Bible, which is all Jewish, mind you. Uh, this was never Yeshua or, or his disciples' intent, and it certainly was not Father God's intent. And I do believe when Yeshua returns, everyone is going to be keeping the commanded times, the appointed times that God has set in order, and he will restore it for all people. Because he will be the ruling, reigning king. There will be no other other empires to contest it. Amen. Amen. Now, if you've been following the ministry, you, you know that we are in the book of Le Leviticus. We've just uh, basically begun um, talking about the sacrifices, the burnt, the burnt offerings and other offerings. We haven't gotten to chapter 23 of Leviticus, and we will be getting um, to a lot of that during Passover week and the different um, readings we are to partake in this week. Now, Passover is also known as Pesach, P-E-S-A-C-H. It is a major holiday that celebrates the biblical story of the Israelites' escape from slavery in Egypt, which occurs on the 15th day of the Hebrew month of Nisan, always in the first month, which biblically that the first month uh, was known as Aviv or spring, uh, it, the, the, you know, during, during the first month of sp spring. Uh, we know um, the Hebrew calendar month was changed to Nisan after the Babylonian captivity. The word Pesach or Passover can also refer to the Korban, um, the Paschal Lamb, Korban Pesach, the Paschal Lamb, that was offered when the the, there was a temple in Jerusalem to the Passover Seder, the ritual meal on Passover night, or to the Feast of Unleavened Bread. One of the biblically ordained three pilgrimages I mentioned is Passover. Now, Passover is traditionally celebrated 
within Israel for seven days and for it is for eight days among uh, those of us in the diaspora based on the concepts of Yom Tov Sheni Shel Kolayot. In, in the Bible, the seven-day holiday is known as is, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But we call it the week of Passover, too. And then I commanded Moses to tell, tell the people to mark a lamb's blood above their doors in order that the angel of death would pass over them, or that they would not be touched by the tenth plague that was coming, the death of the firstborn. And after the death of the firstborn, Pharaoh ordered them, the people, the, the Israelites, to leave, taking whatever they want. And that was actually promised of Adonai. And he, the people left, um, they, they spoiled the land, basically, and they left, they, they left very rich. Um, also, Pharaoh asked Moses to bless him in the name of the Lord. Um, the Passover goes on to state that the Passover sacrifice recalls the time when God passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt. And the story will be recounted uh, over, uh, it's re recounted over the Passover meal. Uh, and we are going to do that with the Passover Seder um, in the second part. So um, the wave offering of barley was offered at Jerusalem on the second day of the festival, and the counting of the sheaves is still practiced for seven weeks, or the counting of Omer for seven weeks until the the Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost on the 50th day, the holiday of Shavuot. It has all of those names, Feast of Weeks, um, Shavuot, Pentecost. Nowadays, in addition to the biblical prohibition of owning 11 foods, for the duration of the holiday, the Passover Seder, um, at which the Haggadah is read aloud, uh, it is the most widely observed practices um, leading into this this holy week. Now there has been debate over the word Pesach. Um, it was first mentioned in the Torah's account of the Exodus from Egypt and. And the debate is um, commonly the commonly held assumption that it means he passed over in reference to God's passing over or skipping the houses of the, of the Hebrews during the final plague uh, of the 10 plagues of Egypt. Um, and that stems, that stems from the translation provided in the Septuagint Greek. And also the term Pesach may also refer to the lamb or goat, which was designated as the Passover sacrifice called the Korban Pesach in Hebrew. Four days before the Exodus, the Hebrews were commanded to set aside a lamb, as I mentioned in, in earlier uh, Shabbat services. Um, they were to take it, they were to inspect it daily for blemishes. They took care of it, took it in their home. Uh, and during the day on the 14th of Nisan, they were to, to kill the animal and use its blood to mark their lintels and doorposts. Before midnight on the 15th of Nisan, they were to consume the lamb. And they were given specific instructions how to do it and to not leave anything until morning. Uh, if there was leftovers there, they were to burn it up. Uh, the English term Passover is first known to be recorded in the English language in William Tinsdale's translation of the Bible, later appearing in the King James Version as well. It is a literal translation of the Hebrew term. And in that version, it says, For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts. The Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. The Passover is a, is a mitzvah commanded by Torah, by Adonai, by God himself. And we know to show his power, Yahweh inflicts a series of ten plagues on the Egyptians, culminating in the tenth plague, the death of the firstborn of the Egyptians. Now, we're no longer sacrificing, sacrificing animals in this day, uh, but we do observe all the commanded feasts of, of Adonai, of God. Now, before Passover, it, it, is, it is advisable to remove anything with yeast in it, um, because we are not to be 
uh, taking eating anything with yeast in it during during this this week. So matzah is used. Um, a symbol of this holiday is matzah or unleavened flatbread made solely from flour and water, which is uh, not allowed to rise. I mean, we know that yeast is is the the agent that allows bread to rise, and that is not included in this. It's it's more like a it looks like more like a cracker, a flat cracker. And we will go through everything that we're going to be doing with the Passover Seder in part two. Um, so, so we are going to be, be doing a Passover Seder in part two. And bringing it back to Yeshua, Yeshua, he was both the sin offering and, and the, the offering for restitution. As in Hebrews chapter nine, verse 28, Messiah was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. You know, I also want to mention here Yeshua being prepared for burial. Um, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Yeshua, and with Pilate's permission, he came and he took the body away. Um, and we can read, and we also read how Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus came to Pilate to ask for Yeshua's body. And because, because Jewish burial customarily takes place within 24 hours, in keeping with that practice, they sought to bury Yeshua right away. It also fulfilled prophecy that he would be buried in a rich man's tomb um, that had not been used. Well, they also prepared Yeshua's body for burial. with uh, It was a ritual purification. And in this, the body was cleansed, dried, and dressed in a simple white shroud. There was also the mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds, um, taking Yeshua to Yeshua's body. The, the two of them, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea, uh, the two of them wrapped, um, wrapped Yeshua's body with the spices and strips of linen. This was in accordance with... with um, the burial customs, and Yeshua had had um, been wrapped in linen, and they were practicing the cus this custom, providing the proper burial garment for the de for, for deceased. And since the Sabbath was quickly approaching, there was insufficient time to complete the preparations before the holy days of the Passover began. Therefore, Yeshua was placed in a sealed tomb until the close of the high Sabbath day. Yeshua was buried in a rich man's tomb in fulfillment, as I said, of the Messianic prophecy in Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 verse 9 says he was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had not done any violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. However, more important than how Yeshua was buried is that he rose from the dead and gained victory over death. And Sunday, we are going to talk about that. Messiah has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits, the quorum, of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, Adam, 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 the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man, Yeshua. For as in Adam all die, so in Messiah all will be made alive. And that's First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 to 22. This is the good news that we want to share with everyone. We're going to begin the scripture reading um, now, beginning with the Torah portion. Um, the first is Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 51, the Passover lamb. Now, Ananias spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month will mark the beginning of months for you. It is to be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one lamb for, for the household. But if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor are to take one according to the number of the people. According to each person eating, you are to make your count for the lamb. Your lamb is to be without blemish a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You must watch over it until the 14th day of the same month. 
Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to slaughter it at twilight. They are to take the blood and put it on the two doorposts on, and on the costume of the houses where they will eat it. They are to eat the meat that night roasted over a, a, a fire with matzah and bitter herbs. They are to eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled with water, but only roasted with fire, its head with its legs and, and its innards. So let nothing of it remain until morning. Whatever remains until the morning you are to burn with fire. Also, you are to eat it this way with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You are to eat it in haste. It is Adonai's Passover. For I will go through the land of Egypt on that night and strike down every firstborn, both men and men and animals, and I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt. I am Adonai. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. So there will be no plague among you to destroy you. When I strike the land of Egypt, this day is to be a memorial for you. You are to keep it as a feast to Adonai throughout your generations. You are to keep it as an eternal ordinance. For seven days you are to eat matzah, but on the first day you must remove hummus, and that is that would be leaven from your houses. For whoever eats hummus from the first day until the seventh day, that soul will be cut off from Israel. The first day is to be a holy assembly for you as well as the seventh day. No manner of work is to be done on those days except what is to be eaten by every person that alone may be prepared for you. So you are to observe the feast of Martha, for on this very same day have I brought your ranks out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you are to observe this day throughout your generations as an eternal ordinance. And again, um, when you're born again and saved and part of the family of God, you're part of the community of Israel. And this is what everyone, every person in the family of God is to be doing as well. Um, we are to observe this for all eternity. Well, for all generations, I should say. It's an eternal ordinance. During the first month in the evening of the 14th day of the month, you are to eat matzah until the evening of the 21st day of the month. For seven days, no hamats is to be found in your houses. For whoever eats hamats, that soul will be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is an outsider or one who is born in the land. You are to eat no hamats in all of your houses. You are to eat matzah. Again, during the first month in the evening of the 14th day of the month, you are to eat matzah until the evening of the 21st day of the month. For seven days, no hamats is to be found in your houses. For whoever eats hamats, that soul will be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Whether he is an outsider or one who is born in the land, you are to eat no hamats in all your houses. You are to eat matzah. So this included people that were not Hebrew, but they were they were they were outsiders in it within their borders. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, go select lambs for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. You are to take a bundle of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin and apply it to the cross beam and the two doorposts with the blood from the basin. None of you may go out, up, out the door of his house until morning. Adonai will pass through to strike down the Egyptians, but when he sees the blood on the crossbeam and the two doorposts, Adonai will pass over that door and will not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you down. Also, you, two are, you are to observe this event as an eternal ordinance for you and your children. Now, I also want to mention something that else is, that is also done um, the, the day preceding the Passover Seder. Um, there is the fast of the firstborn. This is commanded to celebrate the fast of the firstborn, which commemorates the salvation of the Hebrews' firstborns that were when it, when they were passed over that night and and saved by um, the blood on the doorposts. So I didn't want to forget to uh, share that with you as well because that that needs to be done if you're listening to this ahead of time. That will be this year on Monday, the 3rd of April, because Erev Pesach is the 4th of April. When you come into the land, which Ed and I will give you, as he has promised, you are to keep this ceremony. 
Now, when it happens that your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? You are to say it is the sacrifice of Ananias Passover because he passed over the houses of the Nile Israel in Egypt when he struck down the Egyptians, but spared our households. So the people bowed their heads and worshiped. Then Benai Israel went and did it. They did just as Adonai had commanded Moses and Aaron. So it came about at midnight that Adonai struck down all the, the firstborn of the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh sitting on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon and all the firstborn cattle. Then Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all, all the Egyptians, and there was loud wailing in Egypt, for there was not a house where someone was not dead. So he called for Moses and Aaron at night and said, Rise up, go out from my people, both you and Benai Israel. Go, serve Adonai, as you have said. Take your flocks and your herds, as you said, and be gone. But bless me, too. Now the Egyptians urged the people, sending them out of the land quickly, for they thought, We will all be dead. So they thought, so the people took their dough before it was leavened with their kneading bowls, bound up in their clothes, on their shoulders, so the night Israel acted according to the word of Moses. They asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and for clothing. Adonai gave the people favor in the eyes of the Egyptians and let them have what they asked for. So they plundered the Egyptians. Then Benai Israel journeyed from Ramses to, to Sukkoth, about 600,000 men on foot, as well as children. Also, a mixed multitude went up with them along with the flocks, herds, and heavy livestock. They had baked matzah cakes from the dough that they brought out of Egypt. It had no hummus because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not delay, so they had not made provisions for themselves. Now, the time that Benai Israel lived in Egypt was 430 years. Now, remember, they had come down with Joseph, and it that time, um, they were welcomed there, and, and actually the Pharaoh loved Joseph and, and made Joseph second in command right under him. So they were blessed. They were given the fat of the land, and that empire of Egypt was actually blessed by God because um, they blessed they blessed the people. They blessed Joseph's family. So during those days, Egypt also flourished as a result. Um, but this pharaoh, there was a pharaoh that rose rose up that did not know Joseph, and this these are the days that uh, that that our ancestors had lived through. Four hundred thirty years they had been in Egypt. So it happened at the end of four hundred thirty years to the very day that all the armies of Adonai went out from the land of Egypt. It was a night of watching for Adonai to bring them out of the land of Egypt. This same night is a night of vigil for Adonai, for Abanai Israel, throughout their generations. Then Adonai said to Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. No foreigner may eat it, but every man's servant that is brought, bought for money after you have circumcised him may eat it. Nor should a visitor or hired servant eat it. It is to be eaten inside a single house. You are not to carry the meat out of the house, nor are you to break any of its bones. Now, this is a type and shadow because actually there was not a bone broken of, of Yeshua on the cross. He died before the Roman soldiers could do that to him, uh, where they did it to the two thieves that were on the cross to enhance their death because sundown was coming and they were about to enter uh, into Sabbath and, and, and Passover. All the congregation of Israel must keep it, but if an outsider dwells with you who would keep the Passover for Adonai, all his males must be circumcised, then let them draw near and keep it. He will be like one who is native to the land, but no uncircumcised person may eat from it. The same Torah applies to the native as well as the outsider who dwells among you. So Albani Israel did so. They did just as Adonai commanded Moses and Aaron. It was on that very day that Adonai brought Benai Israel out of the land of Egypt as armies. And the next reading that we have from the Torah is from the book of Exodus as well. Exodus chapter 33, verse 1 to chapter 34, verse 
35. So it's basically chapter 33 and 34. Then Adonai said to Moses, leave, get out of this place, you and the people that you have brought out of the land of Egypt into, into the land, which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to your seed. I will send an angel before you. I will drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and the Jebusites. Head up into a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not move within the midst of you so that I do not destroy you along the way, for you are a stiff necked people. There had been a lot that took place since the Exodus from Egypt during this wilderness wandering. When the people heard these dreadful words, they mourned, and no one put on any ornament. And then I said to Moses, Say to the night, Israel, you are stiff necked people. If I were going up among you for one moment, I would consume you. Take off your ornaments so that I may consider what to do to you. So Benai Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments from Mount Horeb onward. Show me your glory. Now Moses used, used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. So it happened, everyone who, who sought Adonai would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would arise and stand everyone at the door of his own tent and look after Moses until he had gone into the tent. After Moses entered, the pillar of cloud descended, stood at the door, and he would speak with Moses. When all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, they all rose up and worshipped every man at the entrance of his own tent. So Adonai spoke with Moses face to face as, as a man speaks with his friend. Then he would return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not leave the tent. So Moses said to Adonai, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my eyes. Now then, I pray, if I have found grace in your eyes, show me your ways, so that I may know you, so that I might find favor in your sight. Consider also that this nation is your people. My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest, he answered. But then he said to me, if your presence does not go with me, don't let us go up from here. Or how would it be known that I or your people have found favor in your, in your sight? Isn't it because you go with us? that distinguishes us from all the people on the face of the earth. And I answered Moses, I will also do what you have said, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Then he said, please show me your glory. So he said, I will cause all my goodness to pass before you and call out the name of Adonai before you. I will be gracious toward whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And on whom I will be merciful. But he also said, You cannot see my face, for no man can see me and live. Then Adonai said, See a place near me. You will stand on the rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you will see my back, but my face will not be seen. In chapter 34, Adonai said to Moses, Car, for yourself two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I will write upon them the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. Be ready by the morning, come up to Mount Sinai, and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. No one is to come up with you, and do not let anyone be seen throughout the entire mountain. Even the flocks and herds must not graze in front of that mountain. So he carved two tablets of stone like the first, then Moses rose up early in the morning went up onto Mount Sinai as Adonai had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. Then Adonai descended in the cloud, stood with him there, and as he called on the name of Adonai. The thirteen, thirteen attributes of God. Then Adonai passed before him and proclaimed, Adonai, Adonai the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness and truth, showing mercy to a thousand generations, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yet by no means leaving the guilty unpunished, but bringing the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Then Moses quickly bowed his head down to the earth and worshiped. He said, if now I have found grace in your eyes, my Lord, let my Lord please go within our midst, even though this is a stiff-necked people, pardon our iniquity and our sin, 
and take us for your own inheritance. And there is an exclusive covenant. Then he said, I am cutting a covenant before all your people. I will do wonders such as have not been done in all the earth or in any nation. All the people you are, you are among will see the work of Adonai for what I am going to do with you will be awesome. Obey what I am commanding you today. Behold, I am going to drive out the Amorites, Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites before you. Watch yourself and make no covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going, or they will become a snare among you. Kind of like in our world today. We are in the world, but not of it, and we cannot partake of, of the abominations of the world because that becomes a snare. We need to stay steadfast to God and to his word and his ways. Instead, you must break down their altars, smash their pillars, and cut down their Asherah poles. For you are to bow down to no other God because Adonai is jealous for his name. He is a jealous God. See that you do not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. Otherwise, when they prostitute themselves with their gods and, and sacrifice to their gods, someone will invite you. And you will eat from their sacrifice. Do not take their daughters for your sons, for their daughters will prostitute themselves with their own gods and cause your sons to prostitute themselves with their gods. You are not to make for yourself metal gods. You are to keep the feast of matzah for seven days. You are to eat matzah as I commanded you at the time appointed in the month of Eve. For in the month of Eve you came out from Egypt. And now, as as we stated. It is the month of Nisan. It was renamed after the Babylonian captivity. Every firstborn of the womb is mine, and from all your cattle you are to sanctify the males, the firstborn of the ox and sheep, the firstborn donkey. You are to redeem with a lamb, but if you do not redeem it, then you are to break its neck. You must redeem all your firstborn sons. No one should appear before me empty-handed. For six days you will work, but on the seventh day you will rest. During plowing time and harvest, you must rest. You are to observe the Feast of Shavuot, which is the first fruits of the wheat harvest, as well as the Feast of Ingathering at the turn of the year. Three times during the year, all your males are to appear before Adonai Elohim, God of Israel, for I am going to cast out nations before you, then enlarge your territory, so no one will cover your land when you go up to appear before Adonai your God three times in the year. You are not to offer the blood of my sacrifice with hamet, meaning no, no leaven or no yeast, nor should the sacrifice of the Passover festival remain until morning. You are to bring the choices first fruits of your land to the house of Adonai, your God. You must not boil a kid in its mother's milk. Then Adonai said to Moses, write these words, for based on these words, I have cut a covenant with you and with Israel. So he stayed there with Adonai for 40 days and 40 nights, and he did not eat bread or drink water. He wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Words, or we know them also as the Ten Commandments. Now it happened when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, when he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face was radiant because God had spoken with him. When Aaron and all the night Israel saw Moses, the skin of his face, shone in rays, so they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called out to him, so Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke to them. Afterward, all the night Israel came near, and he gave them all the, the mitzvah that Adonai had spoken to him in Mount Sinai. When Moses was done speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. But when Moses went before Adonai so that he could speak with them, he took the veil off until he came out. When he came out and spoke to Benai Israel, what he was commanded, Benai Israel saw the face of Moses and that the skin of his face glistened. So Moses put the veil back over his face until he, he, he went in to speak with him. Now, you know, this is the second time that Moses went up to the mountain. He had already spent um, that amount of time with Adonai before, and he came down, and the people, the people had sinned. They had, um, they 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 disfigured. They were abandoned. Moses, who what happened to Moses? This person that brought us out here, um, 
he's left us here and um, they were talked into uh, and talked Aaron into building that golden calf, which totally um, was an abomination to Adonai uh, and goes against the Ten Commandments, um, as we know. As 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 Adonai was giving giving that those commandments to Moses, they were actually committing a sin in in worshiping that golden calf. Then next we go to Leviticus chapter 23, and we're going to read verses 4 through 8. Pesach and the Feast of Matzah. These are the appointed feasts of Adonai, holy convocations, which you are to proclaim in their appointed season during the first month and the 14th day of the month. In the evening is Adonai's Passover. On the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Matzah to Adonai. For seven days you are to eat matzah. On the first day, you are to have a holy convocation, and you should do no regular work. Instead, you are to present an offering made by fire to Adonai for seven days. On the seventh day is a holy convocation when you are to do no regular work. Now, again, we are not doing um, animal sacrifices, uh, but we are observing on these appointed times the, the, the commanded feast of God that he, he has commanded us to do. Next, we're going to read um, from the book of Numbers, chapter 28, Modim, appointed times. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Command Benai Israel, and tell them to be careful to present to me at the Modim. These are appointed times. My food offerings by fire as a pleasing aroma. Tell them this is the fire offering which you are to present to Adonai to male lambs of which I hear old, without flaw, as a regular burnt offering prepare one lamb in the morning and the other lamb you are to prepare at twilight along with a tenth of an ephah of fine flour for a grain offering mixed with a fourth of a hin of oil from pressed olives. This is the regular burnt offering initiated at Mount Sinai as a pleasing aroma of fire to Adonai. With each lamb, pour out a fourth of a hin of fermented drink at the sanctuary as a drink offering to Adonai. Prepare the second lamb at twilight. With the same type of grain and drink offerings you prepared in the morning, a fire offering is a pleasing aroma to Adonai. Shabbat, weekly rest. On the Shabbat, you are to present two flawless male lambs a year old, along with two tenths of an ephah of fine flour as a grain offering, mixed with oil and its drink offering. This is the burnt offering for every Shabbat besides the regular burnt offering and its drink offering. Rosh Kadesh, new moon. On the first of the month you are to present to Adonai a burnt offering of two young bulls, one ram, and seven flawless male lambs a year old, with three tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering with each bull, and two tenths of an ephah of fine flour with oil as a grain offering with a ram, and with each lamb a tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, a burnt offering as a pleasing aroma, an offering by fire to Adonai. Their drink offering shall be per bowl half a hen of wine, a third of a hen of wine per gram, and a fourth of a hen per lamb. This will be the monthly burnt offering at each new moon throughout the year. Also, when the goat as a sin offering to Adonai, this the regular burnt offering is to be offered with its drink offering. Pesach, Passover. On the 14th day of the first month is Adonai's Passover. On the 15th day, there is to be a feast. For seven days, matzah will be eaten. You are to hold a sacred assembly on the first day. You are not to do any laborious work. You are to offer to Adonai burnt offering by fire to young bulls, one ram, and, a seven, and seven male lambs a year old. They are to be flawless. You are to offer their grain offering of fine flour mixed with oil, three tenths of an ephah per bull, two tenths of, per ram, and one tenth for each of the seven lambs plus one goat for a sin offering to atone for yourselves. In addition to the morning burnt offering and regular burnt offering, you are to offer these just like that. Just, just like this, you are to offer each day, for each day, for seven days, the food to be offered by fire for each day as a pleasing aroma to Adonai beside the regular burnt offering with its drink offering. On the seventh day, you are to have a sacred assembly and you are to do no laborious work. Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks, on the, on the day of first fruits, when you offer to Adonai a new grain offering during the Feast of Weeks, 
You are to have a sacred assembly. You are to do no laborious work. You are to offer a pleasing aroma, a burnt offering to Adonai, two young bulls from the herd, one ram, and seven male lambs a year old. With each bull, there is to be a grain offering of three tenths of an ephah, a fine flour mixed with oil, with a ram, two tenths, and with each lamb, one tenth, plus one male goat to make atonement for you. In addition, you are to prepare the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and its drink offering. They are to be without defect. Now, this chapter actually, it, it takes us all the way up to Shavuot. And the last reading from the Torah portion that we're going to do today is um, from the chapter, uh, uh, from a chapter in Deuteronomy, chapter 16. We will read the entire chapter of Free Harvest Festivals. Observe the month of Aviv, which we know is now the month of Nisan, and keep the Passover to Adonai your God. For in the month of Aviv, Adonai your God brought you out from Egypt by night. You are to sacrifice the Passover offering to Adonai your God from the flock and the herd in the place Adonai chooses to make his name dwell. You are, to, you are not to eat hamets with it. For seven days you are, are to eat matzah with it, the bread of affliction. For you came out from the land of Egypt in haste. Do this so that all the days of your life you will remember the day when you came out from the land of Egypt. No hamet should be seen with you in all your territory for seven days. And none of the meat you sacrifice on the evening of the first day may be left overnight until morning. You may not sacrifice the Passover offering within any of your gates. Now we know Yeshua did not dine a cross inside the gates. It was outside the camp that he suffered on the cross. So that there is another type and shadow there. That Adonai your God has given you, rather at the place Adonai your God chooses to make his name dwell, there you will sacrifice the Passover offering in the evening at sunset, the time of your coming out from Egypt. You are to cook and eat it at the place Adonai your God chooses. Then you will turn around in the morning and journey home. For six days you are to eat matzah. On the seventh day there is to be a solemn gathering for Adonai your God. On it you are to do no work. Seven weeks you are to count for yourself. From the time you begin to put the sickle to the standing grain, you will begin to count seven weeks. Then you will keep the feast of Shabbat to Adonai your God with a measure of, free, of a free will offering from your hand which you are to give according to how Adonai your God blesses you. So you will rejoice before Adonai your God in a place Adonai your God chooses to make his name dwell. You, your son, and your daughter, slave and maid, Levite and outsider, orphan and widow in your midst. You will remember that you were a slave in Egypt and you are to take care and do these statutes. You're to keep the feast of Sukkot for seven days after gathering in the produce from your threshing floor and wine press. So you will rejoice in the feast. You, your son, and your, your daughter, slave and maid, Levite, and outsider, orphan, and widow within your gate. Seven days you will, you will feast to Adonai, your God, in the place he chooses, because Adonai, your God, will bless you in all your produce and in all the work of your hand, and you will be completely filled with joy. Three times a year, all your males are to appear before Adonai, your God, in the place he chooses at the Feast of Matzah, in the week of Passover. The, the Feast of Shavuot and the Feast of Sukkot. No one should appear before Adonai empty-handed the gift of each man's hand according to the blessing Adonai your God has given you. And and we're not going to continue the chapter. Actually, I'm sorry, we're, we're reading um, chapter 16, verses 1 to 17. And that is the end of the Torah portion. We're going to now also read from the half Torah. We are going to read the entire um Chapter 53 of Isaiah, um, verses 1 through 12. Isaiah 53. Who has believed our report? To whom is the arm of Adonai revealed? For he grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nor beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. One from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our pains, yet we esteemed him stricken, struck by God and afflicted. But he was pierced because of our transgressions, crushed because of our iniquities. The chastisement of our shalom 
was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, each of us turned to his own way, so Anani has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And this is speaking of Yeshua from the prophet Isaiah. And he fulfilled that he he definitely fulfilled all of this. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb led to the slaughter, like a sheep before its shearers it is silent. So he did not open his mouth. Because of oppression and judgment, he was taken away. As for his generation, who considered? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, the stroke was theirs. His grave was given with the wicked, and by a rich man in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. So there, when Joseph Ar Arimathea gave up that tomb for him, he was a rich man. And um, that fulfilled that prophecy. Yet it pleased Adonai to bruise him. He caused him to suffer. If he makes his soul a guilt offering, he will see his offspring. He will prolong his days. And the will of Adonai will succeed by his hand. As a result of the anguish of his soul, he will see it and be satisfied by his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, will make many righteous and he will bear their iniquities. So when we are born again and saved, yes, he makes us righteous. It's only through his finished work on the cross that that occurs. Therefore, I will give him a portion with the great and he will divide the spoil with the mighty because he poured out his soul to death and was counted with transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors. No one else but Yeshua, but Jesus, could fulfill all of this. This has been fulfilled. Amen? Amen. So we're going to also now go to, um, before we go on to... Um, the Brit Kadesha, the New Covenant readings, we're going to go to um, the book of Psalms and read Psalms 1 to um, 2. Psalms, I'm sorry, Psalms 1 and Psalms 2. Um, Torah is a tree of wisdom. Happy is the one who has not walked in the advice of the wicked, nor stood in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the Torah of Adonai. And on his Torah, he meditates day and night. He will be like a planted tree over streams of water, producing its fruit during its season. Its leaf never droops, but in all he does, he succeeds. The wicked are not so, for they are like chaff that is that, that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand during the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Adonai knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to ruin. In chapter 2, the coronation of Messianic king. Why are the nations in an uproar and the people, people's mutter vanity? The king of earth set themselves up. The kings of earth, I'm sorry, set themselves up and rulers conspire together against Adonai and against his anointed one. Let's rip their chains apart and throw their ropes off us. He who sits in heaven laughs. Adonai mocked them. And, and I'm, I'm sure now um, the wicked and, and, and those that are doing things in our world today, and, and then I mocks them. So he will speak to them in his anger and terrify them in his fury. I have set up my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. I will declare the, 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 the decree of Adonai. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask me and I will give the nations as your inheritance and the far reaches of the earth as your possession. You shall break the nations with an iron scepter. You shall dash them into pieces like a potter's jar. So now, O kings, be wise. Take warning, O judges of the earth. Serve Adonai with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he become angry and you perish along your way, since his wrath may flare up suddenly. Happy is everyone taking refuge in him. And yes, we know the only king is Yeshua. Jesus is king forever. So now we're going to go to the Brit Kadesha scriptures, and we've got uh, quite a number of those. The first is from the book of Matthew, um, chapter 12, verses 38 to 45. 
a sign greater than Jonah. Then some of the Torah scholars and Pharisees answered him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But Yeshua replied to them, An evil and adulterous generation clamors for a sign, yet no sign shall be given to it except the sign of Jonah the prophet. For just as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights, so the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. The men of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise up at the judgment with the generation and condemns it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, something greater than Solomon is here. Now, when he said something, you know, greater and greater, he was speaking of himself. And this, he was, he was letting them know, uh, because we know he was crucified, died and buried and rose on the third day. Now, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places looking for rest and doesn't find it. Then it says, I'll go back, back home where I came from. And when it comes, it finds the house vacant, swept clean, and put in order. Then it goes and brings along seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they go in and live there. And that man's last condition becomes worse than the first. So also will it be for this evil generation. The reason being that the key, the key phrase, the key points in here is the house is vacant. Yes. The demons were swept out, but it was never replaced with anything good. We get delivered. We get born again and saved. And the Holy Spirit comes to reside inside of us. Amen. And everything of the word of God, all of all righteous things need to be put in, 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 in the place of, of what was taken our sins, our transgressions, we need to walk in righteousness. So it gives no portal of entrance to anything evil to come in. Amen? Amen. So we're going to go to Matthew chapter 20 and read um, a few verses from chapter 20. Um, we're actually going to be reading verses 17 to 28. The third prediction, death and resurrection resurrection. Now, as Yeshua was going up to Jerusalem, he took the 12 aside privately. And on the way, he told them, look, we're going up to Jerusalem and the Son of Man will be handed over to the ruling Kohanim, Torah scholars, and they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify. Yet on the third day, he will be raised. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came with her sons to Yeshua and she was kneeling down and asking something from him. What do you want? He said to her, she said to him, declare that these two sons of mine might sit one at your right side and one on your left side in your kingdom. But Yeshua replied, you don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup I am about to drink? We are able. They said, they say to him, he said to, to them, you shall indeed drink my cup. But to sit on my right and left, this isn't mine to grant. Rather, it's for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. Now, when the ten heard, they, came, they became indignant with the two brothers. But Yeshua called them over and said, You know that the rulers of the nations lord it over them, and their great ones play the tyrant over them. It shall not be this way among you. But whoever wants to be great among you shall be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you shall be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And next we go to um, Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 17. Baruch Abba, blessed is he who comes. Now as they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Beth, Beth, Bethphage, the Mount of Olives and Yeshua sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village before you right away. You will find a donkey tied up in a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say the master needs them and right away he will send them. This happened to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, 
see your king is coming to you. Humble and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Yeshua had directed them. They brought the donkey and colt and put their clothing on them. And he sat on the clothing. Most of the crowd spread their clothing on the road and others began cutting branches for the tree and spreading them on the road. The crowds going before him and those following kept shouting, saying, Hoshiana to Ben David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hoshiana in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowds kept saying, This is the prophet Yeshua from Nazareth in the Galilee. Then Yeshua entered the temple and drove out all those selling and buying in the temple. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those selling doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house we call the house of prayer. You are making it a den of thieves. The blind and lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. But when the ruling Kohanim and Torah scholars saw the wonders he performed and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Oceana to Ben David, they became indignant. And they said to him, do you hear what these children are saying? Yes, Yeshua said to them, haven't you ever read out of the mouth of babes and nursing toddlers? You have prepared praise for yourself. Then he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, and he spent the night there. And next we're going to go to Matthew chapter 26, verses 14 to 46. He traded and sold for silver, and one of the twelve, the one called Judah of Priot, and, and other Bibles have been Judas Iscariot, went to the ruling Kohanim and said, what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? And they weighed out 30 shekels of silver for him. From then on, Judah began looking for a chance to hand him over. Now, on the first day of Matzah, the disciples came to Yeshua saying, Where do you want us to prepare for, for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My time is near. At your house, I am to keep the Passover with my disciples. The disciples did as Yeshua had ordered them, and they prepared the Passover. Now when it was evening, Yeshua was reclining at the table with the twelve. As they were eating, he said, Amen, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And being very sorrowful, they began each one to say to him, I'm not the one, am I, master? And he replied, the one who dipped his hand in the bowl with me, he's the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes just as it is written about him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And Judah, the one betraying him, replied, I'm not the one, am I, Rabbi? Yeshua said to him, You've said it yourself. Now while they were eating, Yeshua took matzah, and after, after he offered the bracha, which is the blessing, he broke and gave to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the removal of sins. But I say to you, I will never drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. So this, you can see, this is where he instituted um, Holy Communion. In remembrance, he was tell, asking, he was, he was, instructing them on this, showing them this, sharing this with them, and then he asked them to keep this in remembrance of him. And, you know, basically what he was about to do for everyone. After singing the Hallel, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Yeshua said to them, This night you will all fall away because of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to the Galilee. But Peter replied to him, Though all fall away, fall away because of you, I'll never fall away. Yeshua said to him, Truly I tell you this very night, before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Even if I must die with you, Peter says to him, I'll never deny you. And so said all the disciples, Your will be done. Then Yeshua comes with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he tells the disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took along Peter and Zebedee's two sons. 
And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he tells them, my soul is deeply grieved, even to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell face down and prayed, saying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass for me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he comes to the disciples and finds them sleeping, and he tells Peter, so couldn't you keep watch with me for one hour? Keep watching and praying so that you won't enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for a second time, he went away and prayed, saying, My father, if this cannot pass away, unless I drink it, let your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them again and prayed a third time, saying the same words once more. Then he comes to the disciples and says to them, Still sleeping? Taking your rest, look, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Get up, let's go, look, my betrayer is near. And next we're going to go to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 1 to 25. Anointed for burial. Now it was two days before Passover and the Feast of Mata, the ruling Kohanim, Torah scholars were searching for a way to grab Yeshua by stealth and kill him, but not during the festival they were staying, so there won't be a riot among the people. And while Yeshua was in Bethany at the house of Simon Hametzora, reclining at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive oil and pure nard. Breaking open the jar, she poured it over his head. But some got angry and said among themselves, why was this fragrant oil wasted? It could have been sold for over 300 denarii, and the money given to the the poor. And they kept scolding her. But Yeshua said, leave her alone. Why why do you cause trouble for her? She's done me a mitzvah, for you always have the poor with you, and you can do good for them whenever you want, but you won't always have me. She did what she could, and she came beforehand to anoint my body for burial. Amen, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in all the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judah from Korea, Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went out to the ruling Kohanim to betray Yeshua to them. They were delighted when they heard this and promised to give him money, and, Ju and Judah began looking for a chance to hand him over. The new covenant at the last, at the last theater. Now on the first day of, of Mata, when they were slaughtering the Passover lamb, Yeshua's disciples say to him, where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sends two of the disciples and tells them, go into the city. A man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, tell the homeowner. The teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples went out, came to the city, and found just what Yeshua had told them. As they And they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and they were reclining and eating. Yeshua said, amen, I tell you. One of you who is eating with me will betray me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him one by one, I'm not the one, am I? He said to them, it's one of the twelve, one who dips with me in the bowl. For the son of man indeed goes, just as is as written about him. But woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And while they were eating, he took matzah, and after he offered the bracha, he broke it and gave it to them and said, take, this is my body. And he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Amen. I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. And from the book of Luke, chapter 22, also reads about the day before Pesach. And, and we're going to read... Um, uh, verses 1 to 38, the day before Pesach, now the Feast of Matha, which is called Passover, was approaching the ruling Kohanim, and Torah scholars were searching for a way to do away with Yeshua, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judah, the one from Creot, one of the twelve, and he went away and talked with the ruling Kohanim and officers of the temple guard about how he might deliver Yeshua over to them. They were delighted and agreed to give him money, so he agreed and began looking for a chance to hand Yeshua over to them without a crowd. Then came the day of Matzah, when the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Now Yeshua sent Peter and John 
saying, go and prepare the Passover for us so we may eat. Then they said to him, where do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him in the, into the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And with that, he will show you a large upper room fully furnished, make preparations there. So they left and found just what Yeshua had told them, and they prepared the Passover, the Seder in the upper room. When the hour came, Yeshua reclined at a table and his emissaries with him. And he said to them, I eagerly desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will never eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And we had, when he had taken a cup and offered the bracha, he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that I will never drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken matzah and offered the bracha, and that's the blessing, um, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup after the meal, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But look, the hand of the one betraying me is with mine on the table. For indeed, the Son of Man is going as has been predetermined. But woe to that man for whom he is betrayed. So they began to discuss among themselves which of them it might be who would do this thing. But there was also a quarrel among them about which of them is considered the greatest. And Yeshua said to them, The kings of the nations have mastery over them, and those exercising authority over them also called benefactors. But with you, it is not so. Rather, let the one who is greatest among you become like the youngest, and the one who leaves like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who reclines or the one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines? But I am among you as one who serves. You are the ones who have remained with me in my time of testing. And just as my father has granted me a kingdom, so I grant to you that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you shall sit upon thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has demanded to sift you all like wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith will not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Simon said to him, Master, I am I am ready to go with you, even to prison and to death. But Yeshua said, I tell you, Peter, a rooster will not crow today until you have denied me three times that you know me. And he said to me, when I sent you out without a money pouch and travel bag and sandals, you didn't lack anything, did you? They said, no, nothing. And he said to them, but now whoever has a money pouch must carry it as well as a travel bag. And whoever does not own a sword must sell its cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this, which is written, must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted with the lawless. For what is written about me is being fulfilled. But they said, Master, look here, are two swords. And he said to them, it is enough. And next we're going to go to the Gospel of John, chapter 13. Chapter 13 to 17, Modeling Servanthood. Now it was just before the Feast of Passover, Yeshua knew that his hour had come to, to, part, to depart from this world to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them until the end. While the Seder meal was happening, the devil had already put in the heart of Judah from Creo that he should hand over Yeshua. Yeshua knew that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he gets up from the meal and lays aside his outer garment and taking a towel, he wrapped it around his waist. Then he pours water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with a towel wrapped around him. Then he comes to Simon Peter, who says to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Yeshua responded, you don't know what I am doing now, but you will understand after these things. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Yeshua answered him, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but also wash my hands and my head. Yeshua said to him, he who is bathed has no need to wash except the feet. He is completely clean. And you are all clean, though not everyone. He knew who was betraying him for this reason. He said, not all of you are clean. So after he had washed their feet and put his robe back on and reclined again, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly you say, for I am. So if I, am, I your master and teacher, have washed your feet, you, you also ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example you should do for each other 
what I have done for you. Amen, amen. I tell you, a servant isn't greater than his master, and the one who is sent isn't greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Yeshua reveals his betrayer. I am not speaking to all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but so the scripture may be fulfilled. He who eats my bread has lifted up a seal against me. From now on, I am telling you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am. Amen, amen, I tell you, he who receives the one I send receives me, and he who receives me receives the one who sent me. After he said these things, Yeshua was agitated in spirit and testified, amen, amen, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples began looking at each other perplexed, who was he talking about. One of his disciples whom Yeshua loved was reclining at his, his side. Simon Peter nods to him and says, ask him, who is, who is he talking about? Then he who leaned on Yeshua's chest says to him, Master, who is it? And this was, this was John. Um, Yeshua answered, it's the one I will give this bit of matzah to after I dip it. After dipping the matzah, he takes it and gives it to Judah from Korea, the son of Simon. And with that bit, Satan entered into him. Then Yeshua tells him what you're about to do, do quickly. But no one reclining at the table knew why Yeshua said this to him. Since Judah had the money box, some thought Yeshua was telling him, buy what we need for the feast so that he should give, give something to the poor. So after Judah received the bit of matzah, he left immediately. Now it was night, leaving a legacy of love. Then when Judah had gone out, Yeshua said, now the son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will search for me. And just as I told you, told the Judean leaders, as I say to you now, for I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you. So also you must love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love, want love for one another. Master, where are you going? Simon Peter said to him. Yeshua answered, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow me later. Peter said to him, Master, why can't I follow you now? I'll lay down my life for you. Yeshua answered, will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen. I tell you, before the rooster, rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Chapter 14, the way to the father's house. Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me and my father's house. There are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you? that I am going to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself so that where I am, you may also be. And you know that the way to where I am going, Thomas said to him, Master, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Yeshua said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have come to know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do, not, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Yeshua said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you haven't come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am the Father? I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father dwelling in me, he does his works. Believe me that I am the Father, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen. I tell you, he who puts his trust in me, the works that I, I do, he will do. And greater than these he will do, because I am going to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, so that, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. So that is the commandment to pray in his name, in the name of Jesus. And that's how we pray. The believer's helper, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, so he may be with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not behold him or know him. You know him, because he abides with you and will be in you. This is the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. I will not abandon you as our orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will, you will no longer behold me, but you will behold me, because I live. You also will live. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father you are in me, and I am in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. He who, who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and re reveal myself to him. Judah, not the one from, not the one from Creo, not not Judas Iscariot, said to him, Master, 
what has happened that you are about to reveal yourself to us and not the world? Yeshua answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. My father will love him and he will come to him and make our dwelling. And I'm sorry, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the, and the word you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while dwelling with you, but the helper, the Ruach HaKadosh, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of everything that I said to you. Shalom I leave you, my shalom I give you, but not as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled or afraid. You have heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I'm going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. I will not talk with you much longer, for the ruler of this world is coming. He is knocking on me, but in order that the world may know that I love the Father, I do exactly as the Father commanded me. Get up, let's go from here. Chapter 15, Abiding in the Vine. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he trims, so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I will abide in you. The branch cannot itself produce fruit unless it abides on the vine. Likewise, you cannot produce fruit unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and is dried up. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, would ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. In this my Father is glorified, this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, so that my joy may be in you, and your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this. That he may lay down his life for him, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I am no longer calling you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. Now I have called you friends, because everything I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I selected you that you would go and produce fruit, and your fruit would remain. Then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. These things I command you so that you may love one another. The world hates God's own. If the world hates you, know that it hate, hated me before you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own, but you are not of the world, since I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Remember the, world, remember the word I spoke to you. A servant is no greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for the sake of my name, because they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me also hates my father. If I had not done works among them that no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and have hated both me and my father. So is fulfilled the word written in the scripture. They hated me for no reason. When the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also testify because you have been with me from the beginning. Chapter 16. I have spoken these things to you that you may be kept from stumbling. They will throw you out of the synagogues. Yes, yes, an hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. They will do these things because they have never known the Father or me. But I have spoken these things to you so that when their hour comes you may remember that i told you of them i d do not tell you these things from the beginning because i i was with you the ruach reveals truth but now i'm going to the one who sent me and no one of you is asking me where are you? and not one of you is asking me where are you going because i've spoken these things to you grief has filled your heart but i tell you the truth it is to your advantage that i go away for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world about sin, righteousness, and judgment concerning sin, because they do not believe in me, concerning righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will no longer see me, and concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. 
I still have much more to tell you, but you cannot handle it just now. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all, all the truth. He will not speak on his own, but whatever he hears, he will tell you, and he will declare to you the, the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said the Barak will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Death and resurrection foretold a little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, in a little while, you will see me. Then some of his disciples said, said to one another, what does he mean by telling us? A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, in a little while, you will see me. And because I am going to the Father, uh, they kept saying, what's this he's saying? A little while. We don't know what he's talking about. Yeshua knew that they wanted to question him. So he said to them, are you asking each other about this? That I said, a, a little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, in a little while, you will see me. Amen. Amen. I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will celebrate. You will be filled with sorrow, but your sorrow will turn to joy. When a woman is in labor and she has pain because her hour has come, but when she gives birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice and no one will take your joy away from you. In that day, you will ask me nothing. Amen. And then I tell you, whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give to you. He will give you up to now. You have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive so that your joy may be full. These things I have spoken to you in metaphors and hours coming when I will no longer speak to you in metaphors, but will tell you plainly about the father in that day you will ask in my name. And I'm not telling you that I will ask the father on your behalf for the father himself loves you because you have loved me. And I believe that I came forth from God. I came forth from the father and have come into the world. Again, I am leaving the world and going to the father. His disciples say, see, now you're speaking plainly and not in metaphors. Now we know that you know everything and have no need to be asked anything. But this we believe that you came forth from God. Yeshua answered them, do you now believe? Look, the hour is coming indeed has come when you will be scattered each to his own and you will abandon me. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have shalom. In the world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And actually, I'm going to pause it here. So we are going to finish the scriptures uh, on part two and then do the altar call and, and the Passover Seder and uh, and the rest, um, and, you know, the rest of the service in part two. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. Uh, it is so important to read the scriptures and prepare for this holy week that we're entering. We love your word, Father God. We love you. And Yeshua, it is so important that we understand. Um, your part in Passover and your part in in the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Feast of First Fruits and, and, and Shavuot as well. And we love you for everything that you've done for us. And may we honor you in this in this week of Passover, this in, in all of the feasts. May we honor you always, every single day, not just during this week. We give you all of our praise and all of our glory in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.